I make some pretty easy mistakes in today's episode. Pay attention, uh, and hopefully if you ever do one of these, you won't make the same mistakes I did. And let's get to it. Before we put this axle back in the side, or before we start doing anything that involves that, I'm going to go ahead and replace the wheel seal. That's why I didn't worry about it with the brakes, because we weren't to that step yet. They do make tools for this, but on these that you can get to them, pry bar works just fine. There you go. This side gear, which is splined in the middle, splined onto the axle. The new side gear is also splined onto the axle, same number of teeth. And we kept these side to side the same because I need to reuse the shim. So this is the driver's side, driver's side shim. Let's go ahead and spin this where I can get to things. Oh. Spin the drive shaft helps a little bit. There we go. So this is, goes in here. Now, as you can see, we've got that axle pushed all the way through this spline side piece. So C-clip goes in, just like that. C-clip is in. Now we're ready for the next step. Push this axle back out and put that side gear with that shim in. So what I just did was I took this, put it in here, just like that, and that went right inside. When we're done with that, it should now look like this. Now it gets more complicated. Go ahead and we shim passenger side. You're getting less and less room to do these things. So in here is where the C-clip has to go, and I just lined up and got the splines out of the way so that we can slide it in, and I've got this pocket screwdriver holding these pieces apart and I should be able to slide that C-clip right in there. So let's give it a shot, shall we? It's not a lot of room for this. Got it. Okay, got our C-clip on there. Let's see, the next step is those little pins and springs. These are kind of a pain. At least they look like kind of a pain. Let's find out, shall we? Hmm, yes, well, alrighty, there's one mistake already, I'll show you in a minute. Oh, I got to move, it's a start. Ah, fished it back out, not fun, but I'll show you what I did wrong. These pins have to go into the long side hole. So two pins onto this one in the long side hole. Another one there. Oh, dropped it. Steady. Okay, so two pins on that one and two pins have to go into this one on this side. Same thing, long side holes. Okay, one and two. Okay, now we're ready to go back to where we were a couple minutes ago, sliding this piece in and C-clipping it again. And get the C-clip slot to be over here. There we go. Anything like that will do. Oh man, okay. Ah, oh, again, missing, missing, missing the mark. Almost forgot that critical piece. That's back in. Let's do this for the third time. Like I said, I've never put these in before, so it's the first time for everything, I guess. All right, so I've got to get that. Now I need to spin that so I can get to the C-clip slot. There it is. Okay. 
Now we'll shove this axle back in. There we go. There's the C-clip slot, I think. Yep. Right there. Yep. Let's try this again. Nope. That did not do it at all. That dropped the C-clip into the middle. I don't want to do that. It's frustrating sometimes, isn't it? Dropped it in the middle again. We're having a good time though. Okay. And turn it to the C-clip slot, which is there. And I need to get a good look at this axle while I'm doing this. C-clip goes right there. Yep. Dropped right in that time. Okay. Pull that axle back out. C-clip is in. Now comes another difficult part. It's getting everything where it's supposed to be here. I've got to get that pin to go across here and into this slot. There we go. Just like that. And then I'll put one spring in. And this is not easy, is it? I'll show you up close here as soon as I get this spring to go in. Okay, come look. So you have both sides on now. And they are lined up. And the pin that was on this side we push over to here, and then this spring keeps tension on it right there. And now I have three more of those to do. It's really, really fun. Spring. Pocket screwdriver again. And put pressure on that spring. Okay. It's two. Two to go. Push that pin over. Spring. Three pins, one to go. Turn this axle last time. Fourth pin shows up. Push that pin across. Last spring. Got it. All four. Now what's left is our new pin. <laughs> new pin. That's really all that's left. Uh, and I've got to turn that so that lines up with the carrier. So let's get this. Let's see. Let's go opposite here. I want to go this way and then line that hole up here. Yep. Okay, something like that. Uh, and make sure that when you put it in, the side that has the hole for that locking pin goes on the right side. This is called the cross shaft pin. If it really makes that much difference to you. There we go, we got it. And then that's gonna go, let's see, I got Spin this drive shaft so I can get the differential back to put our last piece in. And that's going to lock the cross shaft pin. Oh, okay, okay. Don't fall out on me, Mr. Cross Shaft Pin. I'll kill you. Okay. Almost. I'm holding it up on the backside with one hand because it doesn't want to cooperate. Oh, there we go. All we're doing is putting our cross shaft locking pin in place. Then it's just a matter of throwing the differential cover on and filling this thing up with fluid, which, by the way, with a liberal application of heat, 
and a half inch breaker bar, I was able to get the fill plug out. So that's good. I don't have to do any sort of weird funky things to the diff cover. Ah, that's on there. We've got a locking differential, lunchbox locker installed. So now, oh yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, definitely. Both wheels turning in the same direction. That's what we wanted. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of break and when we come back, we'll see all this up, fill it up. See ya. One of the few things left to do, uh, like I mentioned out at the truck, is to put the diff cover back on and fill it up with fluid. So I have cleaned all the old fluid off of this. I went over to the bench grinder and got all the old material off of it. They do make a gasket for it. And if you wanna get the paper gasket, that's perfectly fine. This one, it appears all they used was like ultra blue maybe to seal it up and it was perfectly dry. So I've got ultra black. I'm just gonna go the sealant route and skip the gasket altogether. So let's go ahead and put some on here and then we'll spread it all out. And then we'll put it on the truck and do not fill it up with fluid right away. Go ahead and give it whatever it says on the back of your sealant to cure it probably at least an hour uh, before you want to go back and double check these bolts and then also add the fluid. So the only thing on here is this larger indented side, obviously, goes where the ring gear is. Other than that, it's pretty simple. So let's hold that in place. I'll get the first bolt on. And maybe another one just so nothing moves around too much. There we go. That'll hold that up. It's been about an hour. I just finished snugging up the bolts on the differential cover. This is the plug that we have to get out. So we're gonna fill it through here. I'm gonna go ahead and use ADW90 out of a gallon jug with the pump. I don't even know what this calls for, but it's not anything special. And I looked it up with a locker. You do not need any added friction fluid additive like you do with a posi. There's no clutch system, it's still all metal to metal. So all you need is gear oil. You can use the gear oil of your choice brand wise. I go with what's on sale and 8090 happen to be on sale. If you have a newer car where maybe it has some sort of electronic locker, anything special, basically if it's under warranty, use what the book says. If it's not under warranty, use what you want. So now all we have to do is take the next half hour to pump this in here. I find it's easier to get the gallon jugs with the pump and use the cord and try to squeeze it in. That's just a pain in the butt to do. So this takes a little bit longer, but ultimately it's gonna accomplish the same goal. Oh, 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 oh. We're there. That is full. Double check with the pinky. Yep. Good way to check is put your pinky in there and just dip it down a little bit and you should touch fluid immediately but the running out onto the ground was the clue for me that thing is full we are golden tighten our fill plug back up it doesn't need to be so tight like it was last time there you go and it's out of there Wipe off all of our excess here. This is from when I drained it. That's gonna do it for today. We finished up our project. Uh, we've now got a locker installed in the rear to go along with the disc brakes we just put on very recently. This thing should be ready to drive and die on me at a moment's notice, as usual. So, until then, see you next time.